say. Yep, there we go. Cool. All right. Introduction to events. Events are actions or occurrences that happen in the system uh, you are programming. Which assistant tells you about uh, so that you can respond to them in some way if desired. For example, if the user clicks on a button or clicks a button on a web page, you might want to respond to that action by displaying information box. In this article, we will discuss some important concepts surrounding events and look how to or how they work in the browsers. This won't be an exhaustive study, just what you need to know at this stage. So. Excuse me. Uh, prerequisites, uh, basic computer literacy, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all this. Um, so our objective is to understand the fundamental theory of events, how they work in browsers, and how the events may differ in different programming environments. A series of unfortunate events, or a series of fortunate events. As mentioned above, events are actions or occurrences that happen in the system you are programming. A system will fire a signal of some kind when an event occurs and also provide a mechanism by which some kind of action can be automatically taken, um, e.g. some code running uh, when the event occurs. For example, in an airport, when the runway is clear for a plane to take off, a signal is communicated to the pilot. As a result, they commence piloting the plane. So they see a signal and now we take off. In the case of the web, Events are fired inside the browser window, and they tend to be attached to specific items that reside in it. This might be a single element, a set of elements, the HTML document loaded in the current tab, or the entire browser window. Uh, there are a lot of different types of events that occur. For example, the user clicking uh, the mouse over a certain element or hovering the cursor over a certain element, the user pressing a key on the keyboard, the user resizing or closing the browser window, a web page finishing loading, a form being submitted, a video being played or paused or finished playing, an error occurring. Uh, you will gather from this and glancing at the MDN events reference that there are a lot of events that can be responded to. Each available event has an event handler, which is a block of code, usually a user find this JavaScript function. That will run when the event fires. Such a block of code is defined uh, to be run in response to an event firing. We say we are re registering an event handler. Note that the event handlers are sometimes called event listeners. Um, they're pretty much interchangeable for our purposes. Although strictly speaking, they work together. The listener listens out for the event happening and the handler is the code that is run in response to what is happening. Uh, note, it is important to note that web events are not just part, part of the core JavaScript language. They are defined as part of the JavaScript APIs built into the browser. A simple example. Let's look at a simple example to explain what we mean here. You've already seen uh, events and event handlers used in many examples in the course already. But let's recap uh, just to cement our knowledge. In the following example, we have a single button, which when pressed will make a background change to a random color. So. Line one has uh, a button element with the text content of change color. The JavaScript looks like so. Uh, variable button is a, assigned to the document query selector to the HTML element button. A function is defined, uh, function random is defined with the parameter of number and it returns map.floor uh, method and within it is the map.random random uh, math.random multiplied by the number uh, parameter plus one. And then the onclick property returns an anonymous function where they uh, declare a variable random color and set the uh, RGB values to three separate random uh, numbers. And then fill, use the document.body.style.background color attribute to set that random color. Uh, in this code, we store a reference and button inside a variable called button using the document card query selector function. We also define a function that returns a random number. The third part of the code is an event handler. The button variable points to the button element. 
and the type of object has a number of events that can fire on it. And therefore, event handlers are available. We are listening for the click event firing by setting an onClick event handler uh, property to an equal and anonymous function containing code that generated a random RGB color and sets the body background color to equal it. This code will now be run whenever the click event fires on the button element, i.e. whenever the user clicks on it. Sample output uh, is as follows. It's not just for web pages. Another thing worth mentioning at this point is that events are not particular to JavaScript. Most programming languages have some kind of event model, and the way it works will often differ from JavaScript way. In fact, the event model in JavaScript for web pages differs from the event model for JavaScript as it is used in other environments. For example, Node.js is a very popular JavaScript runtime that enables developers to use JavaScript to build network and server applications. Uh, the Node.js event model relies on listeners to listen for events and emitters to emit events periodically. It doesn't sound that different, but the code is quite different, making use of the function like on to register an event listener and once to register an event listener that unregisters after it's run once. The HTTP connect event docs provide a good example of use. As another example, you can also now use JavaScript to build cross-browser add-ons, browser functional enhancements using the technology called web extensions. The event model is similar to the web events model, but uh, a bit different. Event listener properties are camel case, so on message rather than on message, all lowercase, and need to be combined with add listener function. See the runtime.onMessage page, for example. You don't need to understand anything about other such events at this stage in your learning. We just wanted to make it clear that events can differ in different programming environments. Ways of using web events. There are a number of different ways in which we can add event listener code to web pages so that it will be run when the associated event fires. In this section, we will review the different mechanisms and discuss which one you should use. Uh, event handler properties. These are properties that exist to contain event handler code that we have seen most frequently during the course. Returning to the above example, as you see, the button on click with the random color, the on click property is the event handler being used in the situation. It is essentially a property like any other variable on the button, e.g., button.text content or button.style, but it is a special type. When you set it to be equal to some code, code will be run when the event fires on the button. Uh, you can also set the handler property to equal a named function, like we saw build your own function section. Uh, the following would work just the same. So rather than doing an anonymous function, we created a function and just named it here. There are many different event handlers properties available. Let's do an experiment. Oh boy, okay. So first of all, make a local copy of the random color event handler property.html and open it in your browser. Just copy this random color element. Example, we've been playing around with already in the article and try changing the button on click to the different value, changing it to the following different values in turn and observing the results. Okay. All right, so click then. Just do this real quick. It's probably going through each actual event, so. Alright. 
So let's go through the different handlers. So on focus and on blur, the color will change when the button is focused. Unfocus, try pressing the tab to tab on the button, on again. These are often used to display information about how to fill in form fields when they are focused or display an error message if the form field has just been filled with an incorrect value. Focus. Super failed. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. On button double click, the change uh, will only work when the button is double. Window dot on key press, window dot one on key down, window one on key up. The color will change when the key is pressed on the keyboard. Key press refers to general press button up, down, then up, while key down and key up just refer to key down up parts of the keystroke, respectively. Note that it doesn't work if you try to register this event handler on the button itself. Uh, we'd have to register it on the window object, which represents the entire browser window. Yeah, okay. So, button on mouse over, mouse over, and on mouse out. The color will change when the mouse pointer is moved, so it begins hovering. Button when it stops hovering, it moves off with respect. Some events are very general and available nearly everywhere. For example, an on-click handler can be registered on nearly any element, whereas some are specific and only useful to certain uh, situations. For example, it makes sense to use on-play only to specific elements such as video. In uh, inline event handlers, don't use these. You might see a pattern like this in your code. So HTML button, on click, BG change uh, as the attribute. The earliest method of registering event handlers found on the web involved event handler HTML attributes, aka inline event handlers, like the one shown above. The Attribute value is literally the JavaScript code that you want to run when the event occurs. The above example invokes a function defined in the script element on the same page, but you could also insert JavaScript directly inside the attribute. For example, there it is, on click, alert, hello. This is an old fashioned event handler. Uh, you'll find that HTML attribute equivalent for many of the event handler properties, however, uh, properties, however, you shouldn't use these. They are considered bad practice. It might seem easy to use an event handler if you're doing something really quickly, but they very quickly become unmanageable and inefficient. For a start, it's not a good idea to mix up your HTML and your JavaScript as it becomes hard to parse. Keeping your JavaScript all in one place is better. Uh, if it is in a separate file, you can apply to multiple HTML doc documents. Even in a single line, Inline event handlers are not a good idea. One button is okay, but what if you had 100 buttons? What if you had, a, had to add 100 attributes to the file? It would quickly turn into a maintenance nightmare. With JavaScript, you can easily add an event handler function to all the buttons on the page, no matter how many there were uh, using something like this. So, huh. I didn't realize you can do that. Cool. So you can take all the buttons, document queries of all, oh, yeah, to return an array of buttons, and then you can run a for loop and add the on-click property. 
Uh, note, separating your programming logic from your content also makes your site more friendly to search engines. All right. So add event listener and remove event listener. I got a question on that, Adam. Yeah. So that loop, does that loop run like constantly as the page is loaded? No, I think it would just actually, so um, I guess it depends on the, if it's like, so let's say it's global, right? Like in this mm -hmm. sense, let's say it's global. Um, I guess it literally just find like, because I forget that query selector all returns an array. That's weird. Yeah, I guess it does return an array. Yeah, of all the buttons. And then. And then the on click property is changed to BG change, so it means that any button that gets clicked will now run this function. Right. I was just wondering how that loop, like, is. I guess it's pretty instantaneous that, like, when you click it, I don't know, it just, it seems weird to me that, like, It depends on where it's, yeah. And, and then it runs the loop, even though the yeah. function's in the loop. I guess it would have to be before you... Yeah, that's weird. I don't know where it would go. Like, it seemed to be, it, it, I guess it seems like a weird thing because I never really used it. Like, I know this exists and I've laughed because of the previous function. Like, this is all, uh, where is it? That inline stuff? Like, yeah. That's, that's how React is done. Like, they use, they oh, use really? the, <laughs> yeah. So, like, in theory, you're, you're, like, you're using attributes to, like, throw stuff like that's why everyone's freaking out with the separation of concerns because you're using these attributes and on click function in your mm. HTML, but it's not really HTML, it's JSX. And, like it's confusing. I don't get it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So I laugh at that part because it's like, yeah, don't separate or separate things, but I don't know. Not everyone's doing that. Right. But it's obviously completely different. <laughs> huh. I, I think PHP is similar. I think a lot of PHP is typed within HTML files as well. Right. Yeah. I know I had to do a bunch of weird stuff in order to get like an attribute, but I think that was more because of WordPress being weird. Hmm. I was just, I was just wondering that loop. I was trying to think of the logic behind it. I mean, I understand what it does. It's just, yeah, but I guess like my thing would be, so obviously you'd have to have a function BG change declared. Mm -hmm. And then this would have to, this would have to happen early on in your code because if it didn't and you clicked on it, yeah, this would have to be like a global basically in yeah. order for it to actually apply. That's weird. Cool. All right, you can continue. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Cool. Uh, add event listener and remove event listener. The newest type of event mechanism is defined in the document object model DOM level to event specification, which provides browsers with a new function. Add event listener. This function in a similar way to the event handler properties, but the syntax is obviously different. We would write, rewrite our random color example to look like this. So same thing, declaring a button. Do the BG change function, and then it would be button dot add event listener, click, and then function name. Uh, inside the event listener function, we specify two parameters: the name of the event that we want to register for this handler, and the code that uh, comprises the event or the handler function we want to run in response to it. Note that it uh, perfectly is appropriate to put all the code inside the add event listener uh, function in an anonymous function like this. So rather than having a declared one, they have the same thing there, anonymous function. This mechanism has some advantages over the older mechanism discussed earlier. Uh, for a start, there is a counterpart function, remove event listener, which removes a previously added listener. For example, this would remove uh, the listener set in the first code block in the section. Cool. So, BG. Remove event listener, click uh, BG change, background change. Uh, this isn't uh, significant for simple, small programs, but for larger, more complex programs, it can provide efficiency to clean up old, unused event handlers. Plus, for example, this allows you to have the same button performing different actions 
um, in different circumstances. All you've got to do is add or remove events as appropriate. Uh, second, uh, you can also register multiple event handlers uh, for the same listener. The following two handlers would not be applied. So uh, the onClick function A and onClick property function B. The second line would overwrite the value of onClick uh, by the first. This would work, however. So adding another event listener, click function A. Uh, both functions would now run the element uh, is clicked. When the element is clicked. In addition, uh, there are a number of other powerful features and options available with this event mechanism. Uh, there are they are a little out of scope for this article, but if you want to read up on them, have a look at add event listener and remove event listener reference pages. What mechanism should I use? Of the three mechanisms, you shouldn't leave, you definitely shouldn't use the HTML event handler attributes. These are outdated and bad practice, as mentioned above. There are two other relatively interchangeable, at least for simple uses. The event handler properties have less power and options, but better cross-browser um, compatibility being supported as far as back as Internet Explorer 8. Uh, you should probably start with these um, as you are learning. DOM2 level events, add event listener and remove event listener are more powerful and can also become more complex and are less well supported. Supported as far as back as Internet Explorer 9, which I think at this point, if you were at Internet Explorer 9, you shouldn't be. Uh, you should also experiment with these and aim to use them where possible. The main advantage of the third mechanisms are that you can remove event handler code if needed using the remove event listener function method. I guess it's a function. And you can add multiple event listeners to the same type uh, to elements if required. For example, you can call add event listener click function or anonymous function on an event multiple times with different functions being specified in the second argument. This is impossible with the event handler properties because any subsequent attempts to set a property will overwrite earlier ones. So, same thing. So if you're called upon to support browsers older than Internet Explorer 8, I hope you're not, in your work, you may run into difficulties, such as ancient browsers using different event models for newer browsers. Uh, but never fear, most JavaScript libraries, for example, jQuery, have built-in functions that abstract away cross-browser differences. Don't worry about this too much at this stage in your learning journey. Other event concepts. In this section, we will briefly cover some advanced. Oh, I'm sorry. Does anybody have any questions about the add new event listener? No, I'm good with it. Okay, just making sure. I <laughs> think. Uh, cool. Other event concepts. In this section, we will briefly cover some advanced concepts that are relevant to events. It is not important to us understand these fully at this point but it might serve to explain some code patterns you'll likely come across from time to time. Event objects. Sometimes inside an event handler, you might see a parameter specified with the name event or EBT or simply just E. This is called the event object and it is automatically passed to event handlers to provide extra uh, features and, or information or and information. For example, let's rewrite our random color example again slightly. So, Blah, 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 e, console.log e is the two things that we changed, and then calling them or tying them to the add event listener. Uh, here you can see we are including an event object e in that function. Right here. And, then here. and in the function, setting a background, oh, here, sorry, as well. Uh, in the function, we are setting the background style on e.target which is the button itself. The target property is the event object which is always referring to the element that the event has just occurred on. So in this example, we are setting a random background color on the button, not on the page. So I guess this would be the e.target, right? So when it says e.target, it's meaning this thing. Cool. 
Note, you can also uh, use any name you like for the event object. You just need to choose a name that you can use to reference it inside the event handler function. E, EVT, event are all commonly used by developers uh, because they are short and easy to remember, and it's always good to stick to a standard. E.target is incredibly useful when you want to use the same event handler on multiple events and do something to all of them when the event occurs on them. Uh, you might, for example, have a set of 16 tiles that disappear when they are clicked on. It is useful to always be able to set it to just to set the thing that to disappear as e.target rather than having to select some more difficult way. In the following example, we create 16 div elements using JavaScript. We then select all of them using document.querySelector, then loop through each once, adding the onClick handler to each. That makes it uh, a random color that's applied to each one when it clicked. So, same weird, dumb thing where they collect the divs, run through a loop, and set the style background to a random color. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, that is probably the, <laughs> the simplest code ever, but I'm sitting here, I've been clicking on it ever since I like <laughs> scrolled down to it. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's way too easy. Cool. All right, most event handlers you'll encounter just have a standard set of properties and functions methods available on the event object. See the event object reference for a full list. Some uh, more advanced handlers, however, add specialist properties containing extra data that they need to function. The media recorder API, for example, has data available event which fires when some audio or video has been recorded and is available for doing something, for example, saving it or playing it back. The con corresponding on data available handler event object has a data property available containing the recorded audio or video data to allow to access it and do something with it. All right, so preventing default behavior. Sometimes you'll come across a situation where you want to stop an event uh, doing what it does by default. The most common example is that of a web form. For example, a custom registration form. When you fill the details and press the submit button, the natural behavior is for the data to be submitted to a specified page on the server for processing, and the browser to be redirected to a successful message page of some kind, or the same page if there's not specified. The trouble comes when the user has not sub submitted the data correctly. As a developer, you'll want to stop the submission of the server to the server and give them the error message, telling them what's wrong and what needs to be done to put things right. Some browsers support automatic form validation features, but uh, since many don't, you are advised to rely on those, uh, not rely on those and implement your own validation checks. Let's look at a simple example. So first there's HTML form, first name, last name, Input submit. Cool. So now some JavaScript, uh, but here we implement a very simple check using the on submit event handler. Uh, the submit event is fired on a form when it's submitted, and that tests whether the text fields are empty. If they are, we call the prevent default function on the event object, which stops the form submission and then displays an error message in the paragraph below our form to tell what the users, uh, or tell the user what's wrong. So, on form submit, anonymous function e, if first name dot value is empty and last name dot value is empty, they run the prevent default, which stops the submission, and then I guess add the text contents. You need to go in both names. Obviously, there's a pretty weak form validation. It wouldn't stop the user from validating spaces uh, or numbers entered in the field, but it's okay for example purposes. Okay. Cool. 
So event bubbling and capture. The final subject to cover here is something that you'll not come across often, but it can be a real pain if you don't understand it. Event bubbling and capture are two mechanisms that describe what happens when two handlers of the same event type are activated on one element. Let's look at an example to make this easier. Open up the show video box HTML example in the new tab. Um, it also be live, available live below. This is a pretty simple example that shows and hides a div with the video. Um, oh, what the? Oh, I see. Okay, I see. Now. This is a pretty example that shows and hides a div and a video element inside of it. So, div class hidden, video source, rabbit 320. Or WebM or the fallback, which is your browser is supported with HTML5 video. When the buttons click, the video is displayed by changing the class attribute on the div from hidden to showing. The example CS contains these two classes, which position the box off the screen and on the screen, respectively. Cool. Uh, we then add a couple on-click event handlers, the first one to the div element and the second one to the video element. The idea is that when the area of the div outside the video is clicked, the box should be hidden again. And when the video itself is clicked, the video should start to play. So, But there's a problem. Currently, when you click the video, it starts to play, but it causes the div to be hidden at the same time. This is because the video is inside the div. It is also, it is part of it. So clicking the video actually runs both of the event handlers. Bubbling and capturing explained. When an event is fired on an element that has parent elements, e.g. the video element in our case, modern browsers run two different phases, the capturing phase and the bubbling phase. In the capturing phase, the browser checks to see if the element's outermost ancestor HTML element has an on-click event handler registered on it uh, in the capturing phase and runs it if so. Then it moves on to the next element inside the HTML and does the same thing. Then the next one and so on and so on until it reaches the element that it was actually clicked on. In the bubbling phase, the exact opposite occurs. The browser checks to see if the element that was actually clicked on has an on-click event handler registered to it in the bubbling phase and runs it if so. Then it moves on to the next immediate ancestor and does the same thing and the next one and the next one until the HTML, it reaches the HTML element. So then capturing goes from HTML to the event, the specific thing, and bubbling goes from the specific thing out to the HTML element. In modern browsers, by default, all event handlers are registered in the bubbling phase, so this one. So in our current example, when you click on the video, the click event bubbles from the video element outwards to the HTML element along the way. If the video.onclick handler, uh, if it finds the video.onclick handler and runs it, so the video first start playing. Uh, it then finds the video box on click handler and runs it so the video is hidden as well. So, fixing the problem with stop propagation. This is an annoying behavior, but there is a way to fix it. The standard event object has a function available called stop propagation, which, when invoked on a handler's event object, makes it so that the handler is run, but the event doesn't bubble up any further up the chain. So no more event handlers will be run. We can therefore fix our current problem by changing the second event handler in the function of the previous code like this. So video to on click function, the event object, which is represent this E in the parameter, and then E dot stop propagation video play. You can try making a local copy of that and having a go at fixing it yourself or looking at the fixed result here. Cool. Note, 
Why bother with both capturing and bubbling? Well, in the bad old days when browsers were much less cross compatible than they are now, Netscape only used event capture and Internet Explorer only used event bubbling. And when the W3C decided to try to standardize, standardize the behavior and reach consensus, they ended up with a system that included both, which uh, is the one modern browser implemented. Note, as mentioned above, by default, all event handlers are registered in the bubbling phase. And this makes it more sense uh, most of the time. If you really want to register an event in the uh, capturing phase instead, you can do so by registering your handler using that event listener and setting the optional third property to true. Cool. Event delegation. Bubbling uh, also allows us to take advantage of event delegation. This concept relies on the fact that if you want some code to run when you click on any one of a large number of child elements, uh, you can set the event listener on the parent and have the events uh, and have events that happen on them bubble up to their parent rather than having it set to the event listener on every uh, every child individual. A good example is a series of list items. If you want each one of them to pop up a message when it is clicked you can set the click event on the parent UL uh, element, and it will bubble to the list items. This concept is explained further on David Walsh's blog with many multiple examples how event delegation works. Conclusion. You should now know all you need to know about web events at this early stage. As mentioned above, events are not really a part of core JavaScript. They are defined within the browser's web API. Also, it is important to understand that different contexts in which JavaScript is used tend to have different event models, from web APIs to the other areas such as browser web extensions and Node.js, which is server-side JavaScript. We're not expecting to understand all these areas now, but it certainly helps to understand the basic events as you forge ahead with learning web development. If there is anything that you didn't understand, feel free to read through the article again or contact us to ask for help. All right, um, so that pretty much finishes this block of uh, the building block section of MDN. Um, this uh, next project, um, we could work on this like over the weekend if you got time. Um, it's a basic image gallery. Cool. So that'd be good practice on JavaScript. You guys been having fun, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Seriously, you just knocked this stuff out, boy, man. <laughs> nice work. Okay. Yeah, I figured we'd make it through that that block, but I mean, how far are you guys, dude? We we went all the way through building blocks. So you guys are at client side APIs. Well, we got objects next. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Objects are next, man. All right, that's what's up. You guys are almost there, bro. Dang, bro. Why y'all making me catch up so much, man? Y'all, yeah, I'm leaving. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going with Tech uh, Tech Nino, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Get on that HTML and CSS. Get it done. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you could do JavaScript uh, next month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I ain't going. I'm not going back to JavaScript. I mean HTML and CSS. Screw that. <laughs> nah, man. You'll learn it the more you do it. Now nah, you know. I thought. I'll probably knock it out to that, like in the next few days or something. I'll go for it. So. Uh, I mean, don't try to absorb it all at once, man, because yeah. you, you want to learn it until you get to a point where, like, do you, do you get into a point where you just don't understand something? Mm, like, uh, I see. That's true. And then, like, yeah, I w what I would do is to be, like, switch tutorials and see if something else makes you understand it. Yeah. Now you guys know I get HTML and CSS already. I just want to go through it to go through it. But like, I'm you never know. You could always learn more. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, I mean, you could do HTML, CSS a bunch of times, but there's always something new you can learn. Like I haven't touched the, like a lot of HTML5, like semantic kind of stuff. Like I've never, I, 
I've done images, but I haven't done like video or audio. And yeah, semantics are easy. You'll, 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 you'll get that really easy. Absolutely. You can do functions within CSS now with keyframes. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. More for animations, I think, at that point, but still pretty cool. Like, it's just cool stuff you can do with it. Yeah, I mean, like, in, like, when you learn, like, SAS and stuff like that, you can use variables in CSS, which is pretty cool as oh well. Oh, my God, it's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Rather how than you uh, it 50 times, you can change it once. Uh, how was your guys' uh, – do you guys have – I know you have a personal portfolio. Adam, do you have a personal portfolio? Yeah. Um, here, I'll show you. All right, yeah. I guess I can go. Here, I'll share it on here. It's. Uh, I took it. I took most of it from a. Uh, I think one of Traversy's uh, media's. Um, one of did his you, tutorials. Did you code it? Hmm? It was just HTML, CSS, a little bit. Yeah, of, uh, I saw that tutorial, but I never watched it. But it looked pretty good. I need to go through it and. But yeah, I just it's real simple animations. So just hovering effects. Um, I don't want your dumb books. Calibrate over you. All right, uh, and then there's a little animation and hover effect. Uh, just a little blurb. Uh, it's responsive. And uh, I have some of my work, so I use Flexbox and Grid basically. But uh, the, you got the uh, color guessing game from Cold Steel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm replacing that with a real website. Like I just I ran out of ideas. I was like, I just need to throw stuff on here to make it look like I did stuff. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> you guys have any freelance projects yet? Uh, not really. Um, Can I get you guys some work? You know what I would recommend? Like tonight before you guys go to sleep? If you guys have Facebook, if you guys have Twitter, I would go on both of those and I would just be like, yo, I'll build you guys a personal web page, like one single web page. Like I'll just build you guys, a, like usually I charge about five, what I would say is like usually I, I don't charge $500 for a web page, but for my friends and family, I will design a web page for you for uh, for the next, uh, so for the next, um, yeah. So if you like, and not a lot of people are going to take that up. That's the weird part. Mm -hmm. Like when I did it, nobody took me up on my offer. Now a year later, I'm having people ask me to build stuff for you know for money. Yeah, I got a uh, possible person. Uh, I'm going to build a WordPress for. Actually, I got one person that I am going to build a WordPress for, mm -hmm. but I got another possible one. And I went to Pantheon.io and like just built out the WordPress and I got to go show it to them and then see if they're willing to pay me to fix it up for them. Is WordPress easier than like just copying and pasting like bootstrap stuff like I was doing? I mean, Word WordPress is super easy. Um, yeah. It's a content management system. So there's, unless you're doing like custom plugins and stuff or like, there's just so many buttons, you know, <laughs> messing with the database and stuff it's pretty much all i wouldn't say it's drag and drop but it's pretty much yeah, all. i like that it's, it looks really nice i like those colors that uh yellow or excuse me white and uh, orange and uh, like gray oh this one yeah no i to totally i think in the tutorial it's all orange and i totally like so i was like yeah orange looks good to me <laughs> i don't have to change it but yeah it's 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 at least responsive i i hosted it on uh aws so it's just static files that just pulls up. Uh, I gotta figure out, like, what's up with AWS, man? How is that treating? It's, I mean, I'm using, like, I'm not using it for, like, I probably should start testing it for, like, WordPress and other, like, real applications. But mm -hmm. static-wise, like, I just made a, a, what they call a bucket, which is really just, like, folder. Like, that's all, they call them buckets, <laughs> but they're folders. Um, and then you, like, there's property, or there's, like, ways to direct a website Cause this, I think I got the domain through hover.com and I just mm -hmm. forwarded the like servers from hover to AWS. Okay. okay. Is it free though? AWS? Yeah. I mean, well, you know, there's like, I think I, I pay like levels. 50 cents really? for like the stuff that I have on here. Cause it's literally just like three files, right? Like it's an HTML file or there's like three or four like HTML files, a JavaScript. You file. have no database, right? 
Um, not for that site, no. It's it's a static website, so I don't really need um, that much. But you don't get charged. Um, I know with database stuff, it's pretty much free to an extent, right? Like I'm sure there's a limit uh, in which they start charging. I would, uh, if I were you, I would check out Firebase just for fun too. Like you probably won't. I don't know if you use it, but just for fun, I would totally check it out. Yeah, I haven't done it. Like I know a lot of the like tutorials that I've done for like chat applications uses Firebase to like pull up. Uh, so yeah, if you can figure it out, because <laughs> I need to, I want to do something with our database for WP Developers, and I want to put it on Firebase, like, because, you know, like, really successful, like, 90K, almost 100K a year developers are telling me, like, I wish I would have started using Firebase sooner, because it just saves you so much time, dude. Right. With the database, at least. Yeah. Uh, this Are you one, trying to learn backend database coding on top of front end stuff, John? Oh. Oh, dude, I got so much going on, bro. I'm not learning it at the moment, um, but eventually, yeah. You're crazy. Right now, I'm, I'm I'm focusing on JavaScript. I'm really focusing on building this website at the moment. I need to freaking hurry up and get this stuff done with, so I can just knock it out, bro, and just get back to learning with you guys, dude. It sucks. Hate those stuff, people. The cheap people. If it was like a thousand bucks, I'd be happy. But matter of fact, if he gave me it all up front, I'd be happy. But he's paying like fifty dollars a week, which is like slave labor. Hey, it's something to start, I mean, man. <laughs> it's something to start. It's something to start. Uh, you know, I you, you saw what I posted with that uh, upward fiber challenge, man. Just, yeah, it's it's like it's like you said. You do that one, and then like if somebody says, "Hey, you did such and such for somebody for." 200 bucks it's like well now nah, I, I can't do it for two you know for two yeah. add up my prices all right okay yeah that's smart dude pat how's your thing coming too dude you want to stop recording yeah yeah i'll stop